Jesus' brothers are mentioned in several Bible verses, Matthew chapter 12 verse 46, Luke chapter 8 verse 19 and Mark chapter 3 verse 31 say that Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. The Bible tells us that Jesus had four brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas who is also known as Jude. The Bible also tells us that Jesus had sisters but they are not named or numbered. In John chapter 7 verse 1 to 10, his brothers go on to the festival while Jesus stays behind. In Acts chapter 1 verse 14, his brothers and mother are described as praying with the disciples. Galatians chapter 1 verse 19 mentions that James was Jesus' brother. The most natural conclusion of these passages is to interpret that Jesus had actual blood half-siblings. Some Roman Catholics claim that these brothers were actually Jesus' cousins. However, in each instance, the specific Greek word for brother is used. While the word can refer to other relatives, its normal and literal meaning is a physical brother. There was a Greek word for cousin and it was not used. Father, if they were Jesus' cousins, why would they so often be described as being with Mary, Jesus' mother? There is nothing in the context of his mother and brothers coming to see him that even hints that they were anyone other than his literal blood-related half-brothers. A second Roman Catholic argument is that Jesus' brothers and sisters were the children of Joseph from a previous marriage. An entire theory of Joseph is being significantly older than Mary, having been previously married, having multiple children, and then being widowed before marrying Mary is invented without any biblical basis. The problem with this is that the Bible does not even hint that Joseph was married or had children before he married Mary. If Joseph had at least six children before he married Mary, why are they not mentioned in Joseph and Mary's trip to Bethlehem, or their trip to Egypt, or their trip back to Nazareth? There is no biblical reason to believe that these siblings are anything other than the actual children of Joseph and Mary. Those who oppose the idea that Jesus had half-brothers and half-sisters do so not from a reading of scripture, but from a preconceived concept of the perpetual virginity of Mary, which is itself clearly unbiblical. But he, Joseph, had no union with her, Mary, until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus, according to Matthew chapter 1 verse 25. Jesus had half-siblings, half-brothers and half-sisters who were the children of Joseph and Mary. That is the clear and unambiguous teaching of God's word. One day while Jesus was teaching a crowd, Jesus' mother and brothers were outside trying to find a way to speak with him. Someone told Jesus that his mother and brothers were seeking to talk with him and he responded by asking, Who are my mother and brothers? Of course, Jesus knew who his mother and brothers were, but he took that opportunity to present an important truth to his listeners. Those who had rejected him had considered themselves worthy to enter his kingdom because of their deeds, which they presumed to be righteous. But from the beginning, Jesus explained that they had to change their minds, which means to repent, about how they could gain entrance into his kingdom. Instead of relying on their own works or their lineage, they needed to rely on Jesus for their righteousness. Many had assumed that, because they were of Abraham, they were automatically qualified to enter the kingdom. But Jesus taught that neither their lineage nor their deeds were enough to get them into the kingdom. Their family relationships were not the ticket into the kingdom. After Jesus had been rejected with finality by those in leadership, and after Jesus had pronounced judgment on that generation, Jesus asks, Who are my mother and brothers? In this question, he challenges once again the view that family relationships are enough to provide entrance into the kingdom of God. Upon asking the question, Who are my mother and brothers? Jesus answers it pointing out his disciples and telling the crowd that his disciples were his mother and brothers. While that initially may have puzzled his listeners, he clarified immediately, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. In other words, the relationships that really matter in the eternal scheme of things are those relationships based on rightly relating to God. 
Yes, scripture tells us that during Jesus' earthly ministry, his own brothers did not believe in him. Those who had lived with Jesus for nearly three decades really did not know him. Not one of his brothers is mentioned as a disciple during his pre-crucifixion ministry. But after his resurrection and ascension, we find them in the upper room worshipping Jesus as God. God used James and Jude, who is also known as Judas, to write scripture. And both of them refer to themselves as servants, which is literally slaves in the Greek of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great testimony of salvation. This, I believe, should give us hope who have unbelieving family members and friends. We can only imagine how it must have been like to grow up with Jesus Christ as your elder brother. Jesus would have been without peer in intellect and wisdom as is seen in Luke chapter 2 verse 42 and verse 47 outstanding the temple rabbis. If it is hard to follow a sinful fallen gifted sibling, imagine a perfect gifted sibling. Because Jesus was absolutely perfect in everything, it is obvious that he must have been the favorite of Joseph and Mary. They could have treated him differently, for they knew that he was the Lord. He must have been the moral standard to his young siblings, and they being themselves sinful, they must have had a bias and resentment towards him, the perfect brother. Yes, familiarity breeds contempt when pride rules the heart. More pain than we know must have been behind Jesus' words. A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and in his own household. The story of Jesus' brothers can actually give us hope for our loved ones. At the time his brothers claimed that Jesus was out of his mind, it must have appeared very unlikely that they would ever become his disciples. But eventually they did. And not only followers, but leaders and martyrs, the early church. I'll end with this quote from John Bloom. He says, and I quote, It is moving to hear James refer to his brother as our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. James chapter 2 verse 1, can you imagine what this phrase meant to James? The Lord of glory had once slept beside him, ate at his dinner table, played with his friends, spoke to him like a brother, endured his unbelief, paid the debt of his sin, and then brought him to faith. End of quote. So take heart. Don't give up praying for unbelieving family members. Don't take their resistance as the final word. They may yet believe and be used significantly in the kingdom. I want to thank you for watching this video until the end. Please to support us on this channel. Make sure that you like this video, share it, and also subscribe. God bless you.